So we had a couple of possessions late. Um, I thought Rolo had some drop off passes to him and, and we didn't we didn't convert those or we didn't make those. Uh, but we competed. We competed. We didn't make a you know, Russell made four threes. Um, but after that, we we had a lot of I mean, uh, I don't know if they're all were open, but a lot of them were good looking threes. And, you know, in order to win with a, a lineup, uh, uh, a lineup that's not playing, that's really good. You got to make threes, and we didn't do that uh, tonight. But we battled, we fought, and we gave ourselves a chance with our, with our toughness and physicality, and that's what we wanted to do. Speaking of Robin, um, how big for, was he off of the bench? I think it was his first double double of the season. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, he was he was good. He gave us, you know, gave us uh, uh, some low post scoring and kind of calmed us down. It even gave Russell a, a blow during the game. Just threw it threw it inside and let him go to work. He has, you know, he has an array of moves and he can score and either block. And but it's it's uh, he those points were much needed. Him and Alex, every every bucket needed. But we needed to we needed to come up with a, a three point uh, game tonight, and and we didn't. And that, that that would have took us, you know, gave us a, a better chance to win the game. Chase. Yes, Scott, um, they were able to make a, a ton of threes, 10 of them in the first half. Um, was Were they just knocking down um, well-contested shots or is there something you guys could have done? No, there was mistakes. It was mistakes. It was the mistakes. We talked about it. We cleaned it up at halftime, but if you're not making threes and you're giving mistake threes, you're going to be in for a long night. We got some guys that have to, you know, have to work on those things. We don't give up strong side threes, and we do that. Uh, we knew that they were going to have some um, reverse actions up top, and we gave that away. They they give us they give us a non they give us a non shooting big, so we didn't do our our perimeter players gave up on a lot of a lot of threes when we don't need to do that. We can force them into the to our big that's waiting for him and but you got to be locked in you got to be locked in in that first half and we weren't and we, we fouled too much um and then we we made too many mistakes on the three and transition points but we did clean it up in the second half much better in the second half but in order to win a game like this it's mental it's mental you you're not gonna when you have a lot of guys out you're not gonna out talent teams you got to mentally be tough and, and mentally be physical i mean throughout the game and you can't have those mess ups. And we, we had too many in the first half, but did we, did we made some adjustments and they cleaned it up in the second half that gave us a chance. And I know it, it came in a loss and, and you've talked about the offense, but just what can you say about how Rui stepped up tonight uh, scoring 30 points? Yeah, Rui's, I mean, Rui's, I'm telling you, he's coming, he's coming along. He still has a, 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 a few more levels of getting better. And that's the, that's the thing I love about him, you know, what he is after a little over, you know, whatever, 90 games in his NBA career, give him, you know, third or fourth year. Uh, we're going to see him get re become really like a, a high, high level player because he can, he's just learning how to, how to play smaller players on the defensive end. And when he, when he picks that up consistently, now you're talking, he can guard one through one through four and occasionally one through fives and, the thing I like the improvement here, and I think him and Russell have the, the synergy together on his early runs. A lot of times, you know, when you take a when you offensively you take a shot, the defensive balance is guards are have to ba balance up. And if Rui, if we can get a rebound, because Russell gets you know, a hundred defensive rebounds a game. So if you run, you're going to get post ups with small guys on you, and you can see the last five games have been more. Russell throwing it over the top. Big or smalls are in, in there. They're in jail. He just he gets in them, puts them in the basket, and that's what we need to do. And he's they got some great. They got good good synergy to, uh, uh, lately. Fred. Hey Scott, uh, building off of Rui, you guys have all talked about how much more aggressive he is. Um, what have you seen from him off the ball though? From like. I remember last year, so so much of his game off the ball was just kind of standing around, and he talked so much about how spacing to the NBA game was a big adjustment for him. Mm -hmm. How would you evaluate where he's at now compared to where he was as a rookie in that it's aspect? Getting, it's definitely improving, Fred. I think he's he's seeing he's seeing the plays develop, and when you, when you're when you get really good, 
you can't wait for it. You got to have the vision and anticipation because if you wait for it, that that play is passed. That 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 cut. That spot, that's over with. You, we're on to the next play. And Russell plays so fast and downhill that you got to be on on time and on target on your on your cuts. And you got to know what you're doing. And he's gotten a lot better. It's like I said, I'm gonna keep coaching him and in, in, in a year or two, it's even gonna get better. And that's that's the what I love about him. He's a young player and look what he's doing at uh, young players. The feel of the game is just he's at the tip of it and it's it's going to keep getting better because he wants it. He wants it. And Russell, like I like I said, he's I see it. I see it off the court. You guys see it on the court. I see it off the court. He's always challenging. Come on, man. You got to do it every night. You got to do it every day. You got to do it every film session. You got to do it every time out. You got to do it every halftime. You got to do it. You got to lock in uh, every game. And, and that's a that's a. That's something that you don't you know, doesn't show on the, the the stat sheet. And and uh, another topic, uh, J- Jerome was out of the rotation for about a month and a half, and, and he started him last game, played him thirty six minutes tonight. Uh, what what has he been showing you to kind of have this stark change in terms? Well, I mean, he's playing because we got a lot of guys out. We got a lot of guys out, and then we don't want. Garrison to come off the bench. You know, when DB comes back, when Brad comes back, um, when Ish comes back, when Howell comes back, there's probably not going to be any minutes. So that's, I mean, that's just the reality of the situation. In this league, there's a, there's a saying, you got you to gotta be ready. You can't get ready. And he's been ready. I mean, I don't think he's played um, lights out, but he's played solid. He hasn't made any shots the first two games. He made some shots tonight. That was good defensively. He's been all right. Um, but it, when these guys come back, the minutes probably are not going to be where they were the last couple of games. Ben? Hey, Scott. Just curious uh, kind of where you see Denny's uh, game right now at this point in his rookie year. Um, up and down. But it's very, it's very common when you look at it. You look at you can go to the history of the game. It's not always it's not always um, roses for for rookies. It's not it's not an easy game. It's not an easy league. These are the best players, the most competitive players, the the best athletes all assembled. And there's 450 really uh, self motivated, well conditioned athletes that are competing every night. And it's an adjustment. It's an adjustment for him. He's made some strides. He's He's taken a step back. He's taken a couple of forward. He's taken a couple of back. He's taken uh, one forward, two. You know, at times he's taken a couple of uh, leaps forward. But it's it's that's normal. That's normal. You look at, like I said, you look at the history. I mean, I'm not saying that he's um, has a chance to be an MVP, but Giannis is a back-to-back MVP. If you follow the league, a lot of rookies, you know, have up and down. Giannis, I think, averaged six points a game. And the next year, I think he averaged 12, and then I went up to 17, and then now he's best player in the world. Um, but that's that's part of it. That's part of growing in this league, and you gotta you gotta earn it. And he's getting some valuable minutes. I mean, he needs to play better, and we want to play have him play better. And tonight was a rough night on both ends, but it's a it's a it's a a lot of things that he can look at and 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 challenge himself to get better and and he will he's a he's a hardworking kid that cares. I mean, he just turned just got out of his teenager's years a few months ago, and that's not always easy to do. And being being in a in a new country and 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 playing, it's hard. But he's I I give him a lot of credit. I think he's adjusting pretty good. And like I said, if he keeps working, he's going to be a really really good player in this league. You know, next year is going to be better. The game's going to be slower. The following year after that is going to be slower. But, you know, tonight when you're not making your shots, one thing I need I need him to start thinking about, like I told him during the one timeout, I asked him if it was a good shot. It was a wide open three. He struggled to say yes. I said, no, that is a good shot. But remember, you have options. You can shoot it or you can drive it. You are a good right-handed driver. So you got to do those options. When you're not making shots, you got to get to the free throw line. I blame this game on Russell. He finally got aggressive and got to the free throw line three times in the last 30 seconds. You know, he was playing, he wasn't playing aggressive basketball for 47 minutes and 30 seconds. And he finally did that. Look, and he got free throws. 
Your your game has changed a lot, specifically as a guy off the ball in the last year. You seem more active as as a off ball cutter and, and that kind of stuff. How would you evaluate where your comfort level is today compared to as a rookie? Um, I feel like it's all because of Russ. You know, he he always get attention, uh, especially offensively. You know, he always has a ball. He he's a great playmaker. Uh, playmakers. And you know he always get give us good opportunities to score, um, even like a staying a dunker, or you know threes. You know he just like you know make us uh, you know make make players good. So that's why I think we. That's why since since last year I think that's the difference for for me to like you know make an easy score like a dunk um, like a dunk uh, those like you know little. I dump down and stuff and yeah, but it's just we started started just getting you know we, it's it's the thirty games we we just played thirty games forty games we and especially me and him you know start getting more connection and chemistry so I think it's gonna be it's gonna help a lot more um, it's gonna I think it's gonna get better more and you you tied your career high tonight with thirty points and and it it isn't just tonight the last ten games or so you're scoring numbers have made a, a huge jump. What do you attribute that to? I mean, just be aggressive, you know, especially Brazil. out. Um, Got to be aggressive, offensively, you know. Um, and then both them too, you know, even defense. I just, I just got to be a guy, you know, like I've been telling you guys, I can go one to five. So, you know, you guys just got to keep doing it. Yeah, and hopefully we don't start winning the games. Ava? Really, I have a really serious question. How did you and Russ um, decide on your handshake in the starting lineup where you guys bow to each other? Oh, <laughs> it was a long time. It was literally the beginning when, when we start, um, start playing together. I think it was from him, though. I remember it was from him. He just wanted to about like that and that's why we've been doing it but yeah it's it's great you know uh, I was calling him senpai which is mean like this like kind of in Japan like in the Japanese we always call those like people all the people respect way to say it. so I call him senpai you know it's like the thing but yeah he's a he's a he's a leader and I look at him um you know I, I like to play with him it's it's very fun so yeah a good handshake. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I like it. <laughs> Rich. Hey, Rui. How difficult to defend were were the Hornets tonight? How tough were they on offense? I mean, there's a lot. They they have a lot of guys can score, um, and especially they have a lot of good uh, college and stuff. So, um, and then. They they made a tough shot, but also if they miss when they miss, we didn't get a diff, uh, rebound. So then they we get we just gave up like second chance and stuff. That's why that's what hurt us. So yeah, we just gotta be more solid. And yeah, we lost uh, last two three games against them. So yeah, we gotta fix that part. Probably gonna use it. Christos. We hope you're doing well. I would like to ask you, what did you notice as your biggest growth, your biggest improvement through the season, this season, and how big is the impact of uh, Russell Westbrook to your game? Um, you know, he's a he's a one of the best point guards all time. And literally, when I started playing basketball, I I watched him a lot when he was in OKC, and and now I'm playing with him, and he makes a good impact. The team and as a leader, he's a great leader, and he always a uh, he was he was he was trying to win the games no matter what, and he come out with good energy. But yeah, also Brad too, you know, um, he's a good leader. He always he's he's the guy always trying to make us you know to score um, offensive defense. We're trying to get going. But yeah, those guys we gotta. But other young guys we gotta I think step step up more, um, especially defensively. We gotta step up and guard the guys. And the offense, we 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 I think we've been fine. So 
You just gotta keep doing it. Thank you. Neil? Hey, Rui, I, I know it came late in the game and you guys weren't able to get the win, but what did you see on uh, that one Russell duck? Oh my God, it was crazy. Yeah, I was right there. It was right next to it. I'm like, yeah. And I watched the highlights too after after the game. And I still can't believe, you know, that was actually the, literally I was, like I said, when I was, when I stopped in Boston, I started watching him. And those are dunks that I, I watched a lot on the TV. And then now I get to see right, literally right next to him. And I felt crazy, you know, like even like last time. Um, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's a beast. He's a beast for sure. Last question to Quentin. Hey, Rui, I've seen that you've been using the step back a lot as of late, especially when navigating in those mid-range areas. How long have you been working on your step back jumper and what made you feel more comfortable uh, implementing it, especially in this point in the season where um, you're more of an option in the offense? I mean, it actually been my, in my game, you know, since I was a junior high, I like mid-range step back, side step, those kind of stuff, you know. But I think I start getting better because I think because of my body um, got stronger. So I can use my more body to like a, make a space, create the space and make a, you know, easy mid-range, you know, those are, those are my shots. And I don't think anybody can stop that. And is there a player that you watch or have watched similar to your body type, your your position, your skill set that you look and try to emulate those moves off of specifically in the mid range as well? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, sorry. But yeah, when we, when I step in basketball, I really, I think I told you guys before too, but I, I really like how Carmelo plays. Um, and I watched him when he, he was playing in New York a lot and he's like a literally meat range king. And that's why I started doing like a one pull up jumper and stuff. And yeah, and I watch him a lot. And then also I watch Kawhi, Kawhi's games a lot. But those two guys are most of the main guys. I start watching it and then those meat range games. Yeah, I think that's what those two guys. Appreciate that. Go Zags. Yeah, go Zags. <laughs> Find that vote. Ava, before I go to you, uh, Robin Lopez is in uh, the primary link for those that are interested. Really, I have a really quick one for you. Okay, so you call Russ Senpai, you said? Does, what does he call you? I haven't, I haven't, uh, I gotta teach him, uh, but I didn't, I didn't, uh, he actually called like Kohai. Kohai is like, a, you know, from a top to like an older guys to younger guys. So yeah, I have to. You gotta teach him still. Yeah, I gotta teach him, yeah. yeah. It's, okay. Yeah, it's not there yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rui. How difficult were the uh, were the Hornets to defend tonight? They do a really good job of moving the ball, um, pushing it in transition, and getting open threes. Um, I thought we did a better job of guarding them in the second half, but it's it's tough when you know when they're hitting threes. Um, we definitely could have been more locked in. I think we all agree there. Ava. Hey, Robin. Um, something we're hearing about so much this season is, is your and Russ's and Brad's effect on the younger guys on this team. Um, just how can a vet instill confidence in a younger guy? Like, sounds, sorry if that's a base question, but how can you guys have that effect on guys like Rui and Denny? Is it just talking to them and, you know, telling them to believe in themselves is as easy as that? Everybody has their own style. Um, some are more vocal than others. Some, more, some lead by example. Um, some are perhaps a little, a little tougher, you know, spare the rods, spoil the child. But, uh, I, I think I like to, I like to encourage a lot, um, you know, pat, pat, pat on the ass, you know, Hey, good job. You could have done this. You could have, you could have done this better. Um, keep at it. It's, it's, it's different. It depends on the player. You guys do have so many different players on different timelines. Do you feel like as a roster, you've kind of figured out that chemistry part of it of just who talks to who, or was that pretty immediate? Maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit. Like you said, I, I think it takes, it takes a little time. Um, it takes a little time. Fred. Hey, Robin. Uh, 
I, I know that the way you've kind of rebounded, at least ever since I've seen you play, is that you've always been more of a team round rebounder than an individual guy where you kind of box out, you clear out space, and whoever grabs the rebound tends to grab it. Was there ever a point in your career, like when, when did you learn how to rebound like that and kind of start to carve out that sort of identity? That's always been my mindset. Um, I have a lot of respect for, you know, in individual rebounding numbers, people who do that. But it's always been my point of view that um, a team's greatest success in that facet is based off team rebounding numbers. If, the, if your team secures the ball, that's going to be better for everybody. I think that's going to lead to a better defense and better offense getting on transition. When, when you're younger and you're not playing, I'm talking like really younger, maybe high school, middle school, and you're not playing with obviously people who understand the game at an NBA level because they're kids. Uh, how, how does that sort of mentality work? I mean, do you have people telling you, go get the ball? Do you have to be more rigid in your thought process? What is that like? I guess uh, I'd have to ask how young you're asking. Um, I definitely had people tell me to go get the ball when I was very young. But I, I, it was, uh, I, I was fortunate in high school to play with Brooke, to play with Quincy Pondexter, to play with um, a, lot of, a, a lot of really great basketball players. I would like to ask you about Rui. How refreshing for you to have a, a so talented uh, teammate like him? And uh, what impressed you most about his game? Um, uh, yeah, Rui's been good. Been crazy, consistently being aggressive, um, which has been big for us. Uh, and you see the last you know, week or so. Chase? Yeah, Russ, when you have a, a young player like Denny, who, um, you know, Coach Brooks was just talking about how, uh, you know, there's ups and downs uh, because he's a rookie. What can you do to try to help him become a more consistent contributor? Um, we try to work with him, figure out, um, you know, how he can be, be his best self. Um, and that's something that, you know, starts within himself, uh, number one, and then, guys like myself can help him kind of get to where he needs to get to to be, uh, you know, the player that he, he potentially wants to be. Neil? Hey, Russ. Uh, Scott made a kind of sarcastic comment that, you know, it wasn't until the end of the game that you were getting free throws, even though you were being aggressive the entire game. You have conversations with the officials all the time. Do you feel that there's anything you can do on your end to, you know, be rewarded for calls? No, just keep playing, you know, it's, it's how it is, how it's become actually for me. So just take it and leave it, just keep on. At this point, do you just, you know, not even try and let it frustrate you at all and just, you know, try and control what you can control and that's an uncontrollable? That's my life. My life is control what you can control. I can't control the uncontrolled. I can't control what somebody else does. Um, you know, unfortunately, that's, that's just how I live my life. Thanks, Russ. Yeah. Quentin. Hey, Russ, this might fall into the control, the uncontrollable, but I saw you and your wife had comments on Instagram about what Stephen A. Smith said about you guys. Well, it's about your play on first, first take. How do you, at this point in your career, continue to hear those comments and just keep going and keep that laser focused? How, how do you just tone everyone out and just play basketball the way you do? Oh. Um. That's how my life been since day one. Um, you know, I've been playing basketball for my whole life. And like my wife mentioned, it's important that you don't let people deter you from your goals, deter you from uh, your plan, deter you from um, the things you have destined in this world. Because uh, prime example, man, is you know, I watch these college games and I watch these kids and these announcers, man, they get on their TV and just say anything about a kid. They don't even know him. They don't know his family. They don't know where he's from. They don't know what he's been through. They don't know his struggles. They don't know his pain. They don't know anything about the kid. Uh, but one thing said on TV can determine how you perceive this kid on TV, which will allow him not to be able to reach his goals, uh, which will allow him not to be able to get drafted, which will allow him not to take care of his family, which will now not create gener generational wealth, which now... Uh, you know, makes our, you know, our people and uh, the minorities, the underserved community, which makes that gap. It's way bigger than basketball. That's, that's my entire life focus. And, 
and my wife, that's what she's mentioning because we talk about all the time is that, you know, I sit back, I don't say much. I don't say, I don't like to go back and forth about people. Uh, but one thing I won't, won't allow to happen anymore is let people create narratives and uh, constantly just talking shit for no reason about me um, because um, I lay it on the line every night um, and I use my platform to be able to help uh, people all across the world. Um, and nobody can take that away from me. Um, I've been blessed to be able to uh, have a platform to do it. And like I said before, a championship don't, don't change my life. Um, I'm happy. Um, I, I, I was a champion once I made it to the NBA. Like I grew up in the streets. Uh, I'm a champion. Like nobody can, I don't have to be an NBA champion. I, I know many people that got NBA champions that's miserable. Have they done nothing uh, for their community? Have done nothing for uh, the people in, in our world? And uh, for me, man, my legacy, like I, like I mentioned before, is not based on what I do on this court. Um, I'm not going to play basketball my whole life. My legacy is what I do uh, off the floor, how many people I'm able to impact and inspire along my journey, man. And uh, that's how I keep my head down and keep it pushing because. It's very important um, that you don't let the, the the negativity seep in because it's been like that my whole career. Honestly, there's no other player that kind of takes the heat that I take constantly. But I, I take it as positive because obviously I'm doing something right if people are talking about me, um, and that's how I feel. And I stay my best foot forward, uh, stay prayful, stay my keep my family close, and, and keep it like that.